Hello and welcome to episode one of sourdough bread making. In this first video, I'm going to introduce the ingredients and equipment you'll need for this recipe and get the grain soaking for the sourdough starter. So the primary ingredients for my sourdough recipe are millet and buckwheat. This is hauled millet. If you're in the US, you probably recognize it as bird seed, but it's actually a really fantastic food for humans and probably my favorite grain. So I highly recommend trying it if you have not already. These are raw buckwheat groats. They range in color from light green to like a light brownish color and they have a kind of pyramid shape. And you wanna be sure that you have raw buckwheat or that you buy raw buckwheat as opposed to kasha, which is roasted. Um, kasha is significantly darker and the flavor is much stronger and the raw buckwheat is best for the fermentation in this recipe. So you'll notice I have millet and buckwheat soaking in two separate bowls. And the reason for that is that um, I'm, I've got a larger quantity here for the bread itself, and the smaller amount is for the sourdough starter. And the sourdough starter only has to be made this first time you make sourdough bread. Next up is flax. I like to use germinated flax, so I've soaked and dehydrated it, which is why it kind of looks like crackers. You can do that if you want to, and you can also purchase sprouted flax seed or um, you can buy just regular whole raw flax, which you'll grind yourself for this recipe, or you can buy it pre-ground, in which case you'll definitely wanna store it, um, any extras in the fridge or freezer. Um, chia seeds, sweetener, I like to use coconut sugar, but you could use maple syrup, honey, cane sugar, or whatever you prefer and have on hand. Um, you can also omit the sweetener altogether. You'll need apple cider vinegar, olive oil, and baking powder. I prefer double acting, but you can use any type for this recipe. And then you'll need plenty of filtered water for soaking, both the starter and the bread grains, as well as spring water for blending the, and fermenting the starter in the batter. So the minerals in the spring water um, are beneficial for a good fermentation, and the chemicals in tap water can actually inhibit fermentation. They can give you kind of a funky ferment. Um, and then finally, I'm going to bake just the basic recipe this time around, but you can always add optional ingredients like raisins or other dried fruit, herbs, spices, nuts, seeds, um, pretty much the sky is the limit for the for bread flavors. So whatever you like to add, um, you're welcome to do. And then before I forget, I am going to soak my starter grains. So this is a half cup each of buckwheat and millet. And I'm gonna soak it in about one and a half or two cups of filtered water. I wanna have it, um, make sure I have it covered really well because, um, you know, obviously it's gonna soak up and get saturated and I wanna make sure I still have um, plenty of water in the end. So the equipment you need is pretty basic. Um, you'll need a large glass bowl you could use a coated ceramic bowl or similar, but um, you definitely don't want to use plastic, wood, or stainless for fermentation. You do want to be sure that the bowl is big enough to allow space for the batter to rise as it ferments and for stirring the rest of the ingredients into the batter without overflowing. A fine mesh strainer for draining and rinsing the soaked grains without losing any since millet is pretty small. If you don't have a mesh strainer, you can line your colander with cheesecloth, or you could use a nut milk bag, um, or find some other creative way to keep from losing the millet with whatever you have available in your house. Uh, you'll need a blender for blending the grains. I love my Vitamix for this and pretty much everything else. But if you don't have a high powered blender like a Vitamix or a Blendtec, it's no problem. You can use a regular blender um, and just know that you'll need to blend your bread batter in smaller batches to get a nice smooth batter. You will need measuring spoons and a measuring cup, which I seem to have misplaced. And finally, bread pans. So I always break my, bake my bread in these stainless loaf pans and I cover the loaves to keep the steam in. So I have plenty of these. So I always just invert one, an empty one over the filled, um, the one that's filled with batter. And then I clip it together with this little alligator clip which you can buy at your local hardware store. And um, that keeps it, it from getting knocked around as I'm moving the bread pans around or um, I have a convection oven, so that can even blow them around a little bit. If you don't have enough pans to do that, or if you're using like 
a glass loaf pan or something, or for some reason your situation is not conducive to doing that, you can also just use aluminum foil. Um, you wanna fold it in half in the center. I can't really do it with one hand very well right now, but the idea is that you fold it in half and then you kind of puff it up so that it's, it's kind of creates a little dome around the pan and that way the bread won't rise up and bake into it. And then you just wanna tuck, tuck it in. So you, you'll wanna do, again, a better job than I'm doing with one hand, but you just wanna seal it up so all that steam um, stays inside. You can tell I've used this aluminum foil multiple times and there's no reason to recycle it after just one use. Um, so just keep using it until it pretty much falls apart. If you don't have loaf pans, that's fine too. I use this recipe for um, making pizza crust, buns, focaccia, and you can bake it on a, you can bake any of those things on a parchment lined tray, or you could use a cast iron pizza pan or just whatever you have available for baking. So you'll be able to find the full ingredient list with quantities on my blog at juliaskitchen.co. And you can also feel free to contact me with any questions you have on this video. Have a great day and I'll see you later when it's time to blend the sourdough starter.